Welcome to part three of the Level Up series, addressing topics of appearance as raised by you, the loyal members of the Till We Make It tribe. Today, I've got six tips to help you take better photos. I'm Mike Quackenbush, this is Till We Make It. And here on my channel, I make videos for professional wrestlers at every single stage of their career. And I do this because when I was just starting out, during my first few years as a professional wrestler, I did not have a coach to teach me, I did not have a mentor to guide me either. And the lack of that knowledge and wisdom and experience played a real role in my failure to achieve my ultimate career goals and I don't want that to become someone else's story. I wanna help you avoid all those pitfalls and traps that I fell into. And today, in part three of the Level Up series, we're gonna to continue to tackle some topics of appearance. Specifically, I wanna help you get more photogenic results the next time you're having photos taken. If you're hearing all of this and you're thinking to yourself, Mike, what does taking better photos have to do with professional wrestling? Well, let me explain. If you were an actor, you would have to have a headshot in order to get work. And the same is true in professional wrestling. You would have to have a promo pick. And you can think of a promo pick as being roughly the equivalent of a headshot from acting, but bear this in mind. A great wrestling portfolio will also include at least one full body shot, one head to toe image of you. And you're gonna need that for any audition or tryout or job that you're applying for within the world of professional wrestling. So having good photos may go a long way toward making sure you rise to the top of the potential hiring pack. Now, let's dive into those six tips. Tip number one is specific to shooting indoors. If you're shooting photos indoors, start by making the set as dark as possible, and then choose intentionally what and how to light what you're going to photograph. So for example, here inside the Wrestle Factory, all the overhead lights right now are switched off. And because I shoot at night, there's no ambient light coming in from the doors or windows. So the set is completely dark, until I start choosing where to put my lights and I tend to light my step and repeat behind me with cool lights while I prefer to be lit warmly. So all of those are intentional lighting choices that I am making to get the desired result. In other words, don't just take whatever light happens to be available and hope that that's going to give you the best possible result because that's fairly unlikely. You want to be very intentional in your lighting choices. If you go back and watch some of the earlier videos on this channel, like this one, you'll see that I appear to be lit very coolly. The whole set has cool light settings on it. But over time, as you probably figured out, I decided to change those settings because I thought that I looked pale and ghostly in some of these. Whereas just by changing the lights, I was able to get a better end result. Tip number two is if you're shooting outdoors. So keep in mind, the most dynamic natural light is going to be available to you at sunrise and at sunset. That's when the sunlight itself will be the least direct, but it will afford you an array of brilliant colors in the sky. If you happen to be outdoors and you're shooting at midday, don't shoot the photos in direct sunlight. Take a step into the shade. That way that really direct sunlight isn't casting shadows on your face. A quick tip, whether you shoot indoors or you shoot outdoors. Could you get better results in your photographs by tweaking the exposure or brilliance or saturation after the fact? Sure, if you happen to be good at Adobe Lightroom, I bet you could get those kinds of improved results. Or you could hire someone who is expert at those things to try and deliver slightly post-produced photos that have even better results for you. But if you don't have that available to you or you can't make that investment and you need the results fairly instantly, then make sure to get the lighting right before you shoot. Tip number three for getting more photogenic results 
is this. If you are working without the benefit of a pro photographer, it's something you're doing on your own, you're shooting it with your phone, avoid wearing a lot of white because this will automatically change the exposure of virtually every camera that is in a mobile device without you even knowing that it's done that. And the result is you will look washed out in the photos. This is an automatic setting that virtually every device does. Now, if you're working with a pro photographer, they'll be able to compensate for the fact that you are wearing so much white. But if it's something that you've got to do on your own, like you're taking a selfie, or you're just otherwise attempting to capture something that your agent could circulate on your behalf, do yourself a favor and limit the amount of white you're wearing. This next one is really important, so listen carefully. My fourth tip to help you get more photogenic results is this. Right before you begin shooting the photos, take a soft cloth or even a paper towel and wipe off your forehead, nose, cheeks, and chin. It is really windy here today. I want you to do this because throughout the course of any day, the natural oils our skin produces can build up on the surface of our skin and when lit, they will become reflective. So right before the shoot begins, wipe those areas off so that in the end product, it doesn't seem as if your skin is greasy. And tip number five is a little specific to professional wrestling. If you have your wrestling gear, get your photos shot in your gear. That's exactly what you want for your promo pick. But if you don't yet have your gear and you need to submit a photo for that audition or that tryout camp, dress professionally. Look smart, but avoid fluorescent colors, logos, or really bold patterns in the clothing that you are wearing. You don't want anything to distract from your face. The whole point of the headshot is to put emphasis on you, your face, your head, not what you're wearing. Last but not least is tip number six for getting more photogenic results in your pictures. When the time comes to actually take the photo, remember these little things. Roll your shoulders back, bring your chest forward, your chin is going to tip up just a few degrees and bring your jaw out ever so slightly. Even if you tend to have softer facial features, this will help create a stronger image in the photo. If you're shooting photos to be part of your demo package or to accompany your wrestling resume, then I think you should watch the video appearing here next. So click on that right now. It's going to aid in your efforts to put that demo package together. Or if you're looking for ideas to inspire the wrestling gear you're about to order, click on this video here. I'm gonna share with you several sources of inspiration to aid in your brainstorming efforts.